vote on a resolution presented by Trustee Lord in July and discuss or address any related matters. Because issues raised in Trustee Lord's resolution overlap with issues that are the subject of litigation, the board met in executive session for one hour immediately prior to this meeting to discuss this matter in an attorney-client privileged setting. Before we begin, I will ask Jeannie to call the roll. Barron? Here. Benson? Here. Brown? Here. Casey? Here. Corbett? Cotner? Here. Dambly? Here. Dandria? Here. Duran? Here. Dumaresk? Eckel? Present. Ferretti? Frazier? Here. Goldstein? Greg. Harpster. Here. Hints. Hints. Huber. Here. Jubilee. Here. Lord. Here. Lebrano. Present. Mosser. Here. McCombie. Here. Mead. Here. Oldsey. Here. Peets. Pope. Here. Rakowicz. Here. Rucci. Here. Schaefer. Here. Silvis? Here. Talaferro? Here. Ed Hintz? Here. For the sake of audio clarity within the meeting room, for those connected via telephone, if you could please mute your connection when you are not speaking. That would be most appreciated. I'd like to thank each of the trustees for taking the time to participate in this special meeting. Our meeting today is being broadcast via audio stream at www.wpsu.org slash live. Copies of the resolutions being discussed today will soon be available on the Board of Trustees website. We also have a number of hard copies of the resolutions available in the room for those in attendance. We have scheduled this meeting to last until noon today. In consideration of people's schedules, we will make every effort to finish our work today by that time. Since we do not have a lot to discuss today, since we do have a lot to discuss today, I am going to ask everyone in advance to please be concise in any remarks that you may wish to make so that we can finish in a timely manner. One final note on the ground rules for today's meeting. Our standing orders provide that visitors to our meetings, including representatives of the news media, shall be present as observers and not as participants. Any form of participation, including speaking, the presentation of petitions, and the display of banners, posters, and other forms of signs is prohibited. I am asking those in attendance to please respect that rule so that the board may focus on its deliberations without distractions. I intend to enforce that rule today. We are now ready to proceed with public deliberations of a proposed resolution originally presented in July by Trustee Lord, as subsequently revised. By way of background, you will recall that Trustee Lord put forth a resolution for full board consideration at our July meeting at Penn State Schuylkill. At that meeting, the resolution was tabled with the understanding that the board would discuss it in more detail during a privileged executive session at the September board meeting. The resolution was discussed for about three hours at our executive session held in September. At the conclusion of that meeting, I asked a small group of four trustees to consider whether a revised form of resolution might be prepared that would pre represent common ground and which could be supported by all of the members of the board. Vice Chair Casey led that group, which also included trustees Fraser, Lubrano, and Talia Ferro. At this point, I would ask Vice Chair Casey to provide a summary of those efforts. Kathy. Thank you very much, Chairman Mosser. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, I want to thank all of the, um, the members of the subgroup, the trustees on the subgroup, um, for their effort in trying to find that common ground. I think, unfortunately, despite those best efforts, we stand here today um, with um, the inability uh, to find that consensus. And we, we, find, we, we, we stand here today with the inability to find that consensus. 
um, and to garner uh, full, full board support for one resolution. I think a, a big part of that, in my view, remains over differences of opinion, fundamental differences of opinion, over the timing and consideration of the board of, um, of the, the free report. And part of that is informed by a different view of the risks and limitations associated with the ongoing criminal, civil, and administrative uh, proceedings that speak to many of the same facts that are underlie um, Free's work. And so I think that has been the crux of the differences in terms of what the board can say today and what the board could affirmatively agree to today in terms of undertaking any further fact-finding. And with that, I would just say again, I think that um, we'll continue to, we um, continue to have discussions this morning. I think that you have uh, several resolutions that have come out of the subgroup that the trustees have had an opportunity uh, to consider and that we'll debate today. And um, again, I just want to thank uh, my fellow trustees for all of their effort in, in trying to find resolution despite our, our inability. Chairman Mosser, as I was on that committee, if I might, just a, a brief word. Uh, we did make a, an honest, good faith effort to find uh, middle ground and were unsuccessful. The truth of the matter is we are just very divided on this issue. This is one of the critical issues that divides this board, unfortunately. <clears throat> the proposals that we have before us today is an amended proposal submitted by Trustee Lord. The two proposed res resolutions that resulted from the work of the ad hoc working group Drafts of these documents were distributed to all board, board members last Friday and again this morning. We will proceed first by asking Trustee Lord to, to present his proposed resolution. Good morning. Um, so as you've heard already, um, a basic question has been answered and we, and we have not reached accommodation. This is the third time that this particular resolution has been introduced. We, have, we are now 90 days later than when it was introduced originally. Uh, some changes have been made and I'll talk about them later. Some changes have been made to the resolution as a consequence of the various uh, external events that have transpired in the last 90 days. Uh, it, we, are, we are talking about the free report <clears throat> issued over two years ago. There are many who, uh, there are many, it seems, who are critical that the free report is not a current event um, and that we should move on. Um, my view is that the, that the results of the free report, including the, the, the NCAA's consent decree, live on. Uh, funds, massive amounts of funds have trans been transferred from this university as a consequence of things deriving from the free report. Also, the free report remains the only report um, that, that was, in effect, the official document from Penn State about the events that prior to 2011. So the fiduciary responsibility that all trustees have remains in place and will continue to remain in place until we sort it out. I would tell you that the resolution that we're, we're reintroducing today is an effort to get past yesterday's issues and address so that we can address the operating issues. I, w I wish that uh, besides this, we were actually talking about matters like instead of, in, instead of um, being pleased with only increasing tuition 2 or 3 percent, we were actually able to talk about reducing tuition. That's an important thing. It's an occurring event. This university has lofty visions for its medical practice and expansion of Hershey. Very serious matters, uh, I think very fundamental matters. I wish we were spending more time on that. It needs a great deal of attention. Um, when I, when I uh, signed up here as trustee and, and uh, President Barron uh, uh, basically arrived at the same time, totally unrelated events, um, he talked to us about this university having a ranking of number eight by U.S. News and World Reports, and while 
I've never agreed much with U.S. News and World Reports. Everybody else seemed to think it was pretty important. Now I understand we're not eight, we're number 14. That deserves attention. But, but we are, in fact, uh, dividing our attention. And what needs immediate attention is the free report. I think it's very difficult on this board, th those of us who are here, and uh, including those of us who are unfortunately are here by phone, and, and even more, some of those who are not on the phone at all. We need to deal with these issues. And the, and the reason is this board is divided on its own, I I each and every one of us view of our sacred past. There are different versions of that on this board. And there are two very different viewpoints indeed. We are divided. The essential divide is between appointed directors and elected directors. There's a little bit of a divide between old directors and new directors. Uh, there seems to, I'll leave the divide there. Uh, I, I joined the board, I think in July or, or, or maybe June. I've been watching events since, uh, obviously, since 1967, but, but um, particularly since November 2011. <clears throat> I've been a trustee for four months. And it has seemed to be one piece of bad news after another, uh, mitigated from time to time by a win on the football field. And then I saw the flag at the Rutgers game, and, and I guess we could talk at length about Rutgers fans. Uh, but it occurred to me, not because not, fans are fans, it occurred to me how far we've fallen, or other people think we've fallen, because we don't stand up for ourselves. If we don't stand up for ourselves, I don't expect Rutgers fans to do it. You know, I, n nothing I like more than applause, but, but you're going to annoy our chairman. And um, <laughs> nah, it's, come on, guys. Seriously. Um, I'm bothered. I think some are, others are bothered and some are not. But I, I'm, I'm bothered by how meekly we react. In fact, we, generally speaking, don't react at all. Our attorneys s suggest to us, be patient, not a strength, suck it up. Maybe we deserve it. We don't deserve it. Louis Free, among, among many um, comments he made about this university, said that the tone at the top, well, first off, we're the top and the president. The tone at the top, his words were completely, entirely wrong. That was in 2000. He was describing, I guess, the environment 2012 and before. It's still wrong. The, the, the tone at the top, as Louis Free said, and we, we say we took his recommendations, the tone at the top was totally wrong. There were roughly 30 board members. One of them, Graham Spanier, was fired. The rest of the top stayed in place. I will say that board candor has been hampered greatly by the, 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 the numerous litigations that are transpiring. There are investigations everywhere. There are, there are six hearings for every investigation. Uh, I get that. And they seem to go on forever. We have, we have Jerry Sandusky in jail now for two years and three defendants uh, sitting in limbo in a criminal case. Uh, there, is a, there is a notion of justice delayed, justice denied. Uh, we're not here to talk about that. There are three cases where the university is playing defense, and I'm, we're not even talking about uh, additional victims showing up uh, from time to time, where the NCAA and Louis Free are the defendants, and Penn State is standing right beside both of them. They are in, they are in other people's crosshairs. I understand, I, and I understand there are a number of people on this board who feel, who feel some exposure there. My own view is if you, if you feel compromised, if you feel at all compromised by the, 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 the various things going on in the legal world, and you're on this board and you're concerned that you can't do the right thing, or that your decisions are affected by that, and I'm not suggesting necessarily that they are, but it is certainly an element, I would suggest to you that you resign. Penn State, Penn State is standing side by side with the NCAA in the case uh, that the Paternos have brought and others, 
and the case that now the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania has brought against the NCAA. The, the NCAA, this is the NCAA that, that and I, this is a quote, said that the Penn, that Penn State football culture, or Penn State football was held in higher regard than human decency. They are, and they are side by side with us against the Paternos who said, success with honor. We are on the wrong side of that issue and history will, history will show us we're on the wrong side of that as well. On, um, on, August, 14th, on August 14th, we conducted a special meeting uh, at which, at, at which uh, the board, the board majority of uh, appointed directors joined the NCAA versus the Commonwealth. We had a, a full and fair discussion of it. I, I, of course, didn't like the outcome. That case is going in the wrong direction, and, and, and this board is going to be in, uh, in the crosshairs along with the NCAA. If I'm not mistaken, the NCAA has taken Penn State funds, the Commonwealth contributes funds to Pennsylvania. I don't see why we're side by side with the NCAA and, and with the Commonwealth. If one were to look at what Judge Covey is doing, she's basically doing our job. She is trying to protect the funds of this university, which have been expended. So today's resolution um, is, is actually a, f is a fair amount simpler. It is also, um, it's also been updated, and I, and I would say uh, much, of the, much of the commentary about the original resolution was that it sought to complete which implied we were talking about an, a new Louis Free, God forbid. Uh, that is not what we're suggesting. The object is to appoint a committee of the board. Let's call it the Free Committee. Delegate authority to them. Examine the Free Report with objectivity. Meet with Free to fill in the many blanks that some of us see in his report. Review the work he did and match it to his findings. We will evaluate evidence and witnesses that he chose not to examine. And these are not, these, this is not evidence or witnesses that, that he was precluded from seeing because of his failure to have, have uh, subpoena authority. There are people that he's, he just chose not to interview. This subcommittee would report back to the board and the board would decide whether we needed additional professional help or what to do from that point forward, including reporting to our constituents. So the resolution essentially reads like the July resolution. There are, there are a couple changes. I'll men I just mentioned them to you. I will not read 16 whereas clauses. Uh, we've, added, we've added Pepper Hamilton to the, the lead paragraph because because uh, it's, it's gotten very complicated about where Louis, where, where Mr. Free actually operated from start to finish, uh, and, the, and the Pepper Hamilton people did most, had uh, provided most of the man hours, uh, and that relationship is a wee bit murky. We've also asked the board to live up to its own transparency commitment and make the free material in General Counsel Dunham's possession available uh, to the board. Um, it is crystal clear to me that these three cases that are coming at Penn State and the NCAA and Louis Free are going to get at that material. It would be, it would be a better, I think it's a better point approach for us to know what's there before everybody else does. Um, and that's about it. Now I'm going to, I will read the thereafter clause, which is the last one. So, um, I, th I think most of you have this. So you have a resolution that's almost two pages, but the one, the, the one that counts is a therefore clause. It says, therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees shall immediately appoint a for a person ad hoc committee, uh, we're calling it here the free committee, to include Albert L. Lord, Anthony P. Lebrano. That's just in case Keith wasn't going to do it anyway. And two members designated by the chair to examine the free report. Meet with free and his investigative team review the full set of undisclosed communications, and report its findings to the full board. 
After appropriate deliberation, the board will issue its own report to its several constituencies. We, we believe that this report needs to be created and issued, and the board needs to take a position with respect to the free report. We know, we know what the board agreed to that's in the free report, and, and frankly, I think almost everybody believes that some of the, uh, some of the 120 odd recommendations that Mr. Free made were worthwhile recommendations. Not all, but some, and we did that. And we have agreed that we accepted that. There's a lot more in that report that we have not, we have not accepted, nor have we rejected. I, so, so to me, what have we done? I guess I've said enough. Thank you. My votes have been that day since that vote fateful day in November. They will continue to be to this day. I urge the defeat of this resolution and the moving forward with this university and the continued observation of the results of the investigations and trials that are ongoing and because of which we cannot make any decisions today. That does not mean that we do not continually focus on the progress and the relevant facts developed. Thank Trustee you, Mr. Jubilee. Chairman. Mr. Chair, since, since it was a personal attack, I think I have the right to respond since I think Mr. my colleague was suggesting that I'm incapable of, of being unbiased. And I'm, I'm, I'm certainly disappointed that, that he would make that statement. Trustee Jubilee. Yeah, thank you very, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, as I listen to uh, my colleague, Trustee Eckel, uh, who I have known for a lot of years, uh, uh, many years in Harrisburg as uh, the uh, leader of the Farm Bureau, uh, I thought to myself, uh, what a significant divide we do have. I, I couldn't do disagree with you more, Keith. I, I just can't. I believe, as Trustee Lord has set forth, uh, we have sat still and watched ourselves be belittled, uh, be uh, labeled that, uh, I mean, I've been asked, how come you guys knew that Joe Paterno wasn't a pedophile for all that time? That's how sick and disgusting the, uh, the public at large views, that the, the many people in the public at large view us. We have seen, if, if this board doesn't take some action. I assure you, reading from the court decisions, and those of you who say, why should the court? Why should the court tell us what to do? Well, the court's going to tell you what to do when, we're, when there's a violation and there's an issue before the court. Commonwealth Court has made it very clear in both the uh, majority and dissenting opinion by Judge Co Covey and Judge Pellegrini. There is an issue of a breach of fiduciary duty. I certainly, I wasn't here then, but I'm here now. And I want to exercise my fiduciary duty and do the right thing and defend this university and, de and do my job as a trustee. As I said earlier, there are cases in the Commonwealth Court, which is holding a hearing in January, in Center County, in Dauphin County, in federal court. But the court of public opinion, Mr. Chairman, I believe, is the one that we have to deal with as well. And if we want to crawl into a hole and say, just wait, just wait, and kick it down the road again, I think we're making a big mistake. And again, it, uh, Council Dunham is not here. Uh, I guess I have to disagree with you again, Keith. I, uh, I, I, I have tried to uh, ask Council Dunham again, where is the authority of the President to speak for this Board of Trustees? Where is it? There's not one of these successful business people who would ever take an issue based on the free report, based on this report that we want to review and say, I'm not going to consult with my Board of Trustees. I've been told by Council that I have the authority to act on it alone. I don't believe that that's the case. I believe that the, the important function that we sometimes get away from is the issue of truth and transparency. It's what I ran on. It's what I believe in. It's what my career has been all my life. 
truth and transparency. And if we don't come out and we don't take all the necessary steps to find and seek and gather what the truth is and spend the 150 to 200 million dollars in the process that has been could have perhaps been used for scholarships, for reduction of, of, uh, uh, of tuition. Are we going to be labeled as the Duke University this time? Are we going to be labeled as, as uh, has been done in British Petroleum in Las Vegas? That's what the free report's all about. We, there is nothing, nothing that we should have to disagree on. All we want to do is finish it. My hat's off to the sponsor. I think he did the right thing. And it's no, there is no downside, none at all, if we review the, 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 uh, uh, the free report. Where is Lewis Free? Why doesn't he come in here and explain it himself? Thank he you, Trustee he Joe Belair. He said he would be here at some time afterwards. He's nowhere to be seen. This is controversial. It has damaged this university. And as a newly elected trustee of this board, I hope that we can make a difference and be able to get to the bottom of what this report said and why it was said the way it is, because the Commonwealth Court has basically said in the most recent decision, they're getting ready to kick out the, uh, the sanctions and, and claim that they're unenforceable. And I look forward to that day, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Trustee Jubilator. Uh, now, is there anybody on the phone because I can't see you raise your hands, of course, but would like to make a comment on this resolution. Okay. Uh, any, uh, Trustee Pope? The question before us today is what is in the best interest of our university? I will make the argument that what is in the best interest of the university is to behave like a university. What characterizes a university is a quest for knowledge. We stand behind the best available information and we share it widely. This board has been standing behind the free report with conclusions that are not well supported by the evidence. Our culture was blamed for the victimization of children. It was said that we value football over human decency. I don't want to stand behind that report for one more day. This report said that members of our community were guilty until proven innocent. Do we value expediency above integrity? I don't want to stand behind this report one more day. We feel an obligation to the victims. We're willing to give them considerable financial compensation. Are we willing to seek the truth so that we can come to a full understanding of the complex events that allowed these children to be victimized? Only by doing that can we arrive at solutions that will protect children here and elsewhere. That's our one silver lining. I believe we have an ethical responsibility to pursue that information. I urge my colleagues to vote in support of this resolution. <clears throat> Any other comments? Are we ready for the vote? Jeannie, would you take a No, call? Mr. Chair. Yep. I, first, let me say, having joined this board July of 2012, but, uh, I've never been more proud to serve with, uh, with my uh, fellow alumni elected colleagues than I am today. Uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a long process to get to this point, uh, and, uh, and I'm glad that, that we're here. I'm saddened that we're still divided, but uh, I think this too shall pass. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have uh, shared with you, I believe in writing, along with Vice Chair Casey, the fact that uh, recently I met with the Attorney General and members of the, uh, the enforcement arm uh, for not-for-profits. And, and my purpose in that meeting was to understand what fiduciary responsibility was and what constituted a breach of fiduciary responsibility. Um, Mr. Chair, I would like to submit for the record 
um, this handbook for charitable nonprofit organizations. Uh, Tom, I'll get you an electronic copy of it. Um, there, there are several points in that uh, handbook that I find very relevant. As a, a board member, we have a, a duty of loyalty. Uh, as a, a board member, we have a responsibility to verify the veracity of information that's provided to us. Uh, as a, a board member, we have the right to receive all information that is necessary and relevant to assist us in performing our duties. Mr. Chair, as you know, as far back as, as um, March of, of 2013, I've been asking for access to the free client files. In fact, I have such a, a writing memorialized uh, making that request. Uh, I, I withdrew that request when I joined the Paternos in the action against the NCAA, but I have since been dismissed from that matter, and so I will again be pressing for access to that information. By and large, Mr. Chair, because I believe that there is no more damning document than the free report with respect to the institution for which I have a duty of loyalty and for whose resources I have the responsibility to steward. And Mr. Chair, we have yet as a board to actually evaluate the free report, ever. From my very first meeting, July 12th, we were quick to accept recommendations, but we really had no interest in exploring the basis for those con conclusions. And I have an obligation, I believe, Mr. Chair, to verify the veracity of the information that was used to reach those conclusions. And Mr. Chair, as has been, been pointed out by several of my colleagues already, uh, although Judge Pellegrini, the president and judge in Commonwealth Court, uh, uh, wrote the dissenting opinion in the uh, Corman McCord v. NCAA case, he wrote something in his opinion that, that uh, should make us all uh, pause. He wrote, the majority appears to arrive at this outcome, referring to his six colleagues, because it is bewildered, as am I, by how the Board of Trustees of PSU could have approved or allowed to be executed a, quote, consent decree, unquote, involving the expenditure of 60 million of PSU funds when the consent decree specifically states that the matter, quote, ordinarily would not be actionable by the NCAA. If, as the majority suggests, the NCAA did not have jurisdiction over conduct because it did not involve the regulation of athletics, then the expenditure of those funds is problematic given that PSU is a nonprofit corporation as well as being tax exempt as a charitable organization. And the boards of directors of nonprofit charitable corporations have a, and this is what's important, fiduciary duty to ensure that funds are only used for matters related to its charitable purpose, in this case, the students of PSU. Mr. Chair, if ever there was a time for us to undertake this, it would be now. And, and as the chair and my colleagues know, uh, I, I submitted a uh, roughly 10 and a half minute video, uh, and it, it was entitled, uh, Why Are We Here Today? Unfortunately, the edits weren't completed until three o'clock in the morning, so we weren't able to distribute them earlier. And, and uh, because the, the chair decided that, that um, you know, time was short, it wouldn't be a good use of time to, to uh, distribute that today in public, uh, I, I am going to make that available. But I, I think if you, you actually watch that video, you understand very clearly why we're here today. This board is divided on an issue that's, that's of the utmost important, importance to this alumni community, and we need to defend Penn State. If not now, then when? And certainly if not us, then who? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Anthony. Bill. Trustee Olsey. Thank you. Um, could not agree more with the words of Trustee Lebrano and what he just said. Um, at some point, uh, because this video was very intelligently put together and contains a lot of meaningful material in terms of the issue we're wrestling with here, it ought to be viewed by everybody and anybody that takes any position on this. In my opinion, I had, uh, I had our trustee office for, uh, send that out to all the trustees uh, this morning. That's great. I appreciate that. Um, in my opinion, this is a very simple matter. 
we can go over it and over it and over it, and we have for the last several years. But the time is long overdue for the Penn State Board of Trustees to begin defending our great university from the damages and the harm that have undoubtedly befallen us as a result of the free report and the actions of the NCAA. The resolution that Al proposes is very clear cut. It calls for the establishment of a special committee of this board to do a very simple thing, to openly, honestly, and comprehensively evaluate the free report with the goal for us to take a strong, well-informed position on exactly how Penn State should move forward with, the regard, with regard to the report, the results of the report, the NCAA, and many related matters. That's all. That's what this resolution calls for. Here's the payoff pitch for me. I truly cannot understand why any engaged trustee of this university who actually has been paying attention to the recent legal and professional opinions regarding Penn State and the NCAA and the entire matter, I truly cannot understand why a truly engaged trustee who's paying attention would not vote wholeheartedly today in favor of this resolution. Quick. I, have you spoken yet? Here? No. Oh, okay, go ahead. No, not today. I'm not in this meeting. Yeah. In addition um, to the alumni um, who feel this, this should be moved forward, I just wanted to mention, and you all are aware of this, the statement by a group of past chairs of the faculty senate that they did prepared over two years ago where they looked at the free report, the NCAA sanctions, and the impact that it had on the academic integrity and reputation of this university. And if I may, this will be quick, Keith, I just want to read a few things directly from their report because I think it's, it's pretty powerful. And they had looked at this, and this is their opinion, and I might mention this was signed by 30 different former chairs stretching back to the 60s, virtually every living um, Senate, past Senate faculty chair. It's talking about the free report as a document in which evidence, facts, and logical argument are marshaled to support conclusions and, and recommendations, the free report fails badly. On a foundation of scant evidence, the report adds layers of conjecture and supposition to create a portrait of fault, complicity, and malfeasance that could well be at odds with the truth. And it goes on and says, as scientists and scholars, we can say with conviction that the free report fails on its own merits as the indictment of the university that some have taken it to be. And just a few more lines. The NCAA uh, cites note, and this relates to the NCAA, picked up their, their, their free report's conclusions about our culture without having done any, any re discernible research about our history. The NCAA cites no document that proves their truth, as the free report certainly does not do. Not only are there these assertions about the Penn State culture unproven, but we declare them to be false. As faculty members with a cumulative tenure at Penn State in the hundreds of years, and as former faculty senate chairs with intimate knowledge of the university stretching back for decades, these assertions do not describe the culture with which we are so very familiar. And we have taken pride in an institutional culture that values honesty, honesty, decency, integrity, and fairness. It is disturbing in the extreme to have that culture's very existence denied by the NCAA. Is there anyone else who has not spoken who would like to speak? Keith, may I? Yes, please. Keith, have you been checked the phone, too? Yeah, OK. Uh, Rick, then Ryan, then the phone. Thank you, Keith. Um, Barb raises issues that concern many in the Penn State community. There are many people who are concerned about some of the conclusions in the free report. Nobody demeans that concern. Bill said now is the time to comprehensively evaluate the free conclusions, the free report. The problem is we cannot do that. Like Judge Free, an ad hoc committee of the board would not have subpoena power. Like Judge Free, an ad hoc committee of the board would not have access to key witnesses for purposes of interviews. Like Judge Free, but even in a more difficult setting, 
the ad hoc committee would not have access to the files of the state attorney general that has been conducting an investigation of the Sandusky scandal, the prosecutors in the pending criminal cases, or the files of the federal investigators who are conducting investigations under the Cleary Act and under Title IX. And those investigations have been going on for some time. Until these legal proceedings are substantially concluded, we cannot, we could not achieve the objective that Bill sets out. We cannot comprehensively evaluate the free report while these legal proceedings are pending. For those who believe this is an important objective, I believe patience is the order of the day. I'm not demeaning the objectives, but I think it is certainly premature for the board to invest substantial energy in the evaluation of the free report and misguided to believe we could do so comprehensively at this time. Because there could be evidence coming from any one of these pending legal proceedings that the day after we were to issue some report on the further evaluation of the, the free conclusions, the day after, the week after, the month after, there could be significant evidence coming from any one of these legal proceedings that would render moot what would be at best a premature attempt to address these questions. So I'm opposed to this in significant part because I believe we cannot achieve the objective that Bill set out to comprehensively evaluate the free report. We have to await the substantial conclusion of these very significant legal proceedings. We just cannot change that fact and therefore uh, I think we should um, defeat the resolution. Trustee McCombie. Thank you, Chair. Then I would suggest that what you say, Trustee DeAndre, may be true, but in the meantime, we should declare ourselves innocent until proven guilty rather than guilty before proven innocent. <laughs> I'd suggest that the universe. Hey, hey. Point, point of order. Point of order. Ryan, is there any reason we can't go for the vote? Come up here. It I won't be but a minute, Mr. Chair. I think a university, by its very essence, is a body that searches for truth. Why would we accept incomplete? Why would we accept incomplete knowledge in something that has so deeply affected us? Our primary responsibility is to the protection and reputation of this university. We have accepted a scarlet letter saying that we are a football culture when everyone knows we are not a football culture. I refuse to wear that letter, and I don't think this university should either. I will vote for this resolution. Mr. Chair, it, it, I have another I recognize that you'd like to keep this moving and respect that. I just want to respond very briefly. I've heard this over the course of uh, the last month, uh, that um, what we've proposed is unworkable because we're not qualified to undertake this endeavor. And I do take exception uh, to that. Uh, I, I think, uh, certainly, I, I feel both Trustee Lord and myself are more than qualified to look at documents. It's something we're very familiar with. And frankly, Lewis Free reached his conclusions based on some body of work. 
that's the body of work we should be looking to. And in, in fact, as I've said before, we have a right to review. And then lastly, you know, there, there was a great president who once said, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Go ahead. Yep. I, just, I just have a question, Chair Mosser, because yeah. I, I, I listen to Trustee Dundria very carefully, and I understand your point, Rick. The, the inability for us to get to a comprehensive analysis, th that inability or the, th those obstructions, did Louis Free have those same obstructions when, when he was tasked by this board to do the report that he did? Certainly had many of them, correct? Yes. Yes. Sure, I just said that. Okay, so he had many of those same obstructions, which, caused, which brings me back to a point that was made by Trustee Eckel earlier where he said, every decision we've made has been a great decision. I stand proudly behind every decision. I wish I had that record in my professional life. I've made some great decisions. I've also made some mistakes. It's okay, sometimes you foul up, but you gotta then undo the things that have been done by the foul ups. So it's, un it's unbelievable, Keith, that you feel that way, but good for you. I wish I were in that camp. Here's my question. If Free had those same encumbrances, if he, if he couldn't get to a comprehensiveness, that certainly the situation called for. Why did we spend almost $9 million and all that time doing all of that work if we knew that it was going to lead to an incomplete and, and product that, that, that we then used in some very interesting ways? It's a very strange set of circumstances. Bill, that gets to a past issue, and we could spend an hour on it. That really doesn't, in one way or another, argue for or against appointing an ad hoc committee. And Mr. Chairman, it's afternoon. Yep. We have a deadline to meet, and I would urge us to move along with the vote. We spent some time on the university. I'm proud to be thrown out here, big jackass. Come on, everybody. 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 Come
When your name is called, if in favor of this resolution, signify by saying aye. And if opposed, say nay. Benson? Nay. Brown? Proudly aye. Casey? No. Kotner? No. Dambly? No. Dandria? No. Duran? Eckel? No. Frazier? Nay. Goldstein? No. Harpster? Nay. Hints? No. Huber? Nay. Jubilier? Aye. Lord? Aye. Lebrano? Aye. Mosser? Nay. McCumbie? Aye. Mead? Nay. Oldsey? Aye. Pope? Aye. Rakowicz? No. Rucci? Nay. Schaefer? Nay. Silvis? Nay. Talaferro? Aye. Tally. Seventeen. Nine. Nine yes. Nine yes. Seventeen no. Okay. Trustee uh, Casey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I'd like to move for the consideration of a resolution that I also had circulated. Uh, to the trustees uh, late last week and um, would like to explain the spirit of that. The resolution was intended to reflect what we believe was a consensus that came out of the discussions that uh, we've referred to earlier, the three and a half hours that we had in executive session in September, um, among other discussions. And while there, as we've noted, that there continues to be uh, fundamental differences among trustees on the timing and, again, the assessment of risks and limitations posed by ongoing uh, criminal, civil, and administrative proceedings, there did seem to be a consensus for speaking positively about what the board does believe its ongoing obligation is, and that's to continue to monitor closely the developments in these, um, in these proceedings and how they may inform the board's future actions. As I mentioned earlier, there was a concern that because so many of these proceedings speak to many of the same facts that uh, underlie uh, some of the judgments that Free made in his report, that these proceedings may ultimately shed light on, uh, on some of the key questions and concerns that have been raised by um, some of our trustees about the legitimacy, the credibility, and the um, accuracy of some of those judgments. So while I think there is a sincere concern about the timing associated with undertaking any kind of independent fact-finding that could be effective in achieving its objective, and I think that's a fundamental concern, is that in and of itself, that the, any, any independent effort made by the board or a third party would be significantly impeded in being able to speak comprehensively and finally on these issues until these proceedings are concluded. That we thought that a resolution recognizing those impediments and then uh, I, I underscoring the board's uh, commitment to continuing to monitor them and then when there is a substantial completion of some of these proceedings to take action that they deem appropriate in terms of further answering any of these questions. The other piece that I just wanted to mention that is incorporated in this resolution, aside from again identifying point by point some of what the, those impediments are, really is to also speak to the board's view with respect to its broader fiduciary obligations and its commitment to the overall mission of Penn State. And that's also an important component of what we felt that this resolution should, should speak to. And with that, Mr. Chairman, um, I'd open it up to any comments. The resolution you? is moved. Is there a second? Second. It's moved and seconded. Discussion on this resolution. Um, 
I, I, what is it we're voting on? I, I thought. No, I'm no seriously. Vice Chairman, you, Vice Chairman Casey has has a has, has a foolproof approach to confusing me. I'd like to know what we're voting on. I can read the operative result. Uh, what is resolved? If that would help you. Would you at least read the therefore clause? You want me to read the where? I can read the Just entire the resolution. Not all. It was circulated. Everybody had it. I, I'm not sure why just you as, didn't. Just as yours was, and as, as, as Trustee Lebrano's revised one no, was. No, Lebrano's was passed out in a hard copy this morning. This was not. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. Mr. Um, Mr. Chairman, point of yes. order. I'd be happy. This let me resolution was circulated to all trustees last Friday, and I think every one of us should know its contents. I don't think we should take the time to read the whole thing. So, the, so the, no, no, the, the, no, the no I agree. I agree, Rick. But but I, I was told, read, and that as of last Friday, we were still negotiating. I didn't know. We, I didn't know there was a, that what what was passed out was was a final resolution. I mean, was this done separately? This, this our resolution has been on the table since July. You you said you sent something around on Friday. I I literally thought you and and Ken and 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 our guys were were, were still working on something last Friday. This has been done. Yeah, as was noted. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. As was noted on Friday. Um, and again, I would just say, as I mentioned earlier, part of the spirit of trying to provide um, notice to trustees on Friday on what the current status of discussions were, were with the subgroup was that it was at that point in time it was clear that we weren't making progress in finding consensus. And since there was the possibility that trustees would be asked to deliberate and vote on, resolutions, we wanted to get that information to trustees as quickly as possible. Understanding that we might have come to a compromise um, subsequent to Friday, that hasn't happened, but that resolution was provided to all of the trustees well in advance. Um, but I would be high, just as you did, um, uh, Trustee Lord, the operative resolved basically says, consistent with its fiduciary duty and priorities, the board shall continue to actively monitor the discovery and factual investigations that are part of the related proceedings, and upon conclusion of those proceedings, shall determine whether any action is appropriate and the best interest of Penn State. If you would like me to read the warehouses, I'm more than happy to do that as well. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Yes. Chair. Uh, question. It appears to me the first uh, whereas is Glean from uh, the engagement letter, uh, is, that, is that an accurate assessment? Yeah, it, the, uh, the spirit of the first um, whereas is to just articulate what the, um, uh, the basis for the, um, uh, for the free engagement was. Well, I'm reading the engagement letter and it's verbatim with one ex notable exception. And the notable exception is that, uh, that he was engaged as legal counsel by the board and this is uh, he was engaged to serve as uh, in independent external legal counsel. Is there a distinction? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the last beat. I said uh, that the engagement letter indicates that he was engaged to serve as an independent external legal counsel. Yeah. Is there a distinction between that and, and the reference here uh, uh, as legal counsel? No, I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't think it was intended to necessarily mirror it. I think the spirit, the oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Ken, go ahead. Oh. We have internal and external legal counsel. That's the distinction. Right, but the engagement letter is very clear that he's engaged as independent external legal counsel, yet our resolution says something not quite as specific as it pertains to that very particular matter, yet the balance of the first whereas is verbatim from the engagement letter. So I'm just wondering why it is we, we chose this particular language. Does no one know? I mean, you're, you're the maker of the resolution, are you not, Kathy? No, I was just, I thought you were asked, I thought Ken was still speaking. Um, I, don't, I don't believe that it's intended to have, a, it's a distinction without a difference. I don't so, think it was so intended to. So well, why would the balance of that first whereas be verbatim? Because I think we were trying to be as accurate as possible about. So the then, why not make the entire first whereas exactly as it is in the engagement letter? We can be clear and unambiguous. I mean, if it's if it's not specific enough for you, I think the spirit is the same. Again, it was just intended to try to articulate what the engagement was. So, are, are you willing to make that change so that it's specific to the engagement letter? Well, I don't know that we have to. What, this Paul, is a resolution that we're offering. It's not supposed to. It doesn't mirror. Right, Everything but there's a purpose. Memory. Words have meanings, right? You're a lawyer by education and training. Words have meanings. We choose them very carefully. 
At least we should. Well, I guess the question, Anthony, is do you believe it has a significant meaning? Well, I, I guess because I'm a cynic, I, I, I'm suspect as to the, the, the reference here being different in one place and only one place. Thank you. I, I don't think there's any question that Judge Free is not a member of the Penn State in-house legal department. So why don't we move on to the vote? Well, thank you. I appreciate your point of view, Rick, but I'm still asking, because Kathy, you crafted this, didn't you? Yeah, Ken and so, yes. Oh, Ken and you. Yes. So Ken, Ken had a comment. Go ahead, Ken. I'm saying I don't think it's a distinction that makes any difference, and I'm happy to mirror the, the, the letter of engagement. I think we have to vote now, though. Thank you, Ken. So we're going to amend this to specifically reference the language in the engagement letter. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I move that the, uh, this uh, resolution be tabled to the November meeting and uh, give us a chance to, to clear some of these things up. It's only a few more weeks. I don't know why we'd have to deal with it now. I'd like to vote for something that is positive uh, instead of, uh, uh, well, I have voted for something that's positive, but something we can all agree on if possible, but I have no idea. I second, I second that. Call for the question. Okay, there's a... I, I think we can have a, some discussion on that, right? On a motion event. to table, Mr. Chairman, point yeah. of order is yeah. not uh, so, so, so table. The motion to table is on the floor. Jeannie, you want to do a vote, call wrote, vote on the motion to table the resolution offered by Trustee Casey? Can I make sure? No. We, it, we, no, I'm just yeah, yeah, We're okay. voting on, on the, the amendment. motion to table. Correct. Right. That's, okay. Benson? No. Brown? Yes. Casey? No. Kotner? No. Dambly? No. Dandria? No. Duran? Yes. Eckel? No. Frazier? No. Goldstein? Yes. Harpster? No. Hintz? Aye. Uh, no. Huber? No. Jubilee? Aye. Lord? Aye. Lebrano? Aye. Mosser? Nay. McCombie? Aye. Mead? Nay. Oldsey? Pope? Aye. Rakowicz? No. Rucci? Nay. Schaefer? Nay. Silvis? No. Talaferro? Aye. <clears throat> Keith? Did, go ahead, Ted. I, I, I know we just voted not to table this, but I, I don't understand why we had 90 days or 100 days or whatever to review Al's resolution it was changed. We had a committee to meet to make changes to it. We had discussion and discussion and discussion and discussion ad nauseum. And now we're rushing to pass something that, frankly, I assume I got it Friday. So I'm going to accept that I got it Friday. So I got it Friday. I don't know why we are in such a hurry to vote on something that we've had for a couple of days. Ted. I just explain that to me what the hurry is. Ted. It's because you're in the minority. <laughs> it, 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 it shall not always be so. I, Al, I don't want you to answer it. I want somebody that voted. It's too not late. To, it's too late. Trustee Echo. Mr. Chairman, I, I want to set the record straight. This resolution was circulated on Friday, along with Trustee Lebrano's resolution. I read them both, and I am one of the technologically challenged members of this committee. <laughs> so it, it's not that I jump on an email. Unfortunately, everybody will tell you that it takes me time to get to them. I've seen it. The issues are clear. The message is clear. There is one of urging continued study and evaluation, recognizing we have not made a conclusion. We are not rushing to judgment. And 
we have had this on the table, Trustee Lord, since July. And I absolutely believe that the discussion was appropriate and necessary. But I also believe it's time now to bring this particular part of the discussion to a close and set a positive direction on the Board of Trustees moving forward. So, so, so uh, Keith, yep. uh, maybe, maybe uh, Vice Chair Casey can answer this. What is the action step, action step in the resolution? Continue? Yes. Okay. Continue to bond. Continue to do what we're doing. Does that need a resolution? I think that... Or, 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 or not do something different? I mean, seriously, seriously, people introduce resolutions to, to do something. This is to, to do nothing. That's, that's not the way I read it, well, 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 then maybe, maybe, Mr. Chairman, you can yes, enlighten me. Is to, is to, monitor, to actively monitor? Oh, we're not doing that now. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. Go. Yeah. I was just going to say, we appreciate your, your point. I doubt it. <laughs> I do appreciate uh, your I point. This is getting beyond what I would say, though, is I think that the spirit behind this and resolution is to recognize ongoing, de uh, ongoing deliberation, ongoing consideration of the related proceedings that is not necessarily known publicly. So it would be the first time that the board has spoken on this matter. You may value that differently, but I think that's the spirit behind what this resolution stands for. I would also note, we spent three and a half hours in executive session in September. This was the crux of that debate. It is not complicated. And so to the degree that we sought in, fair, in, in good faith to try to provide the trustees with as early notice as possible about what might be offered so that there would be sufficient time to consider it, that was done for that reason. Dan, call for the vote? May I ask yeah. Kathleen a question, Keith, before okay, we one, one, one question, um, call for the vote. I understand what you just said, Kathleen, but in the resolution it says, consistent with its fiduciary duty. And then, basically, if you boil this all down, it says, we're going to wait and see, okay? There's significant disagreement, unless, unless I missed the last two hours, which is possible, um, there is a lot of disagreement on the board about our fiduciary duty with respect to everything we've been talking about. So that may lead some of us to, to, uh, to not be in favor sure. of this. Okay. I just want you to yeah, yeah, but understand. I understand. understand. And well, I Mr. Chair, will you be reading the revised amendment so we know what we're voting on? So we... And then my point is that some of us think we have now a fiduciary duty to actually act, to, to begin to, to, to take some action. This basically says that our fiduciary duty continues to be to wait and see. So I would just say, Bill, that um, you're right, as we've heard earlier in the discussion, um, that there is a difference of view with respect to how trustees are meeting their ongoing fiduciary obligations. I think the spirit behind and the purpose behind having this language there, not just fiduciary duty, but also priorities, and they're actually um, uh, preferenced by the paragraph in advance, which speaks about the board's obligation um, in overseeing the teaching and research and service mission of the university as also being an important component of that. So I think that these are, they're re it's read in context in terms of whatever judgment a board may take in the future with regard to um, when, when some of these proceedings have um, uh, come to completion, when they make a judgment about that, they'll be doing that um, under um, the auspices of fulfilling their fiduciary duty. I don't think it means anything more than that. Um, but again, we thought it was important to say and, um, and that's the reason why the language is there. <clears throat> okay. All right, Jeannie, are you ready to call the roll call vote? Well, what, what's the, what's the, what's the, the resolution, call. though? I want to make sure it's I'm clear. what you have before you. But I thought Ken just agreed to, to amend it to yeah, reflect that. Yeah, to say whatever the, the letter says. Let's have the vote there, guys. Right, and just said he would. So I want to make sure we're Let's, go. Let's keep going. So, so call the, the, the Kathy has agreed, has a second agreed to amend the resolution to reflect the language in the free engagement letter. Okay, so the amendments, it, the, the re resolution as amended is called, we're doing the vote, roll call vote. Benson? Yes. Brown? No. Casey? Yes. Cotner? Yes. Dambly? Yes. Duran? No. 
Sorry, Dandrea. Yes. Duran? No. Echo? Yes. Frazier? Yes. Goldstein? Yes. Harpster? Yes. Hints? Mr. Yeah. Chair, I apologize. What are we voting on right now? We're voting on the, the agreement resolution. to amend it, not the resolution yet. The resolution as amended. Sure. No. As oh, amended. Oh. Ed Hintz. Yes. Huber. Yes. Jubilee. No. Lord. No. Lebrano. No. Mosser. Yes. McCombie. No. Mead. Yes. Oldsey. No. Pope. Rakowicz? Yes. Rucci? Yes. Schaefer? Yes. Silvis? Yes. Talaferro? Uh, Abstain. I do have amendments there. Hopefully, you can get us there, but too late. Seventeen yes, eight no, one abstention. Okay, I want to thank the members of the board for your participation today on this important matter. As this was the sole purpose of the meeting today, and there being no other business before us, this concludes the meeting.